Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast with Bryce Johnson. It's a show that unpacks sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. Enjoy inspiring conversations and thought-provoking interviews. You'll hear stories from people that will inspire, challenge, and encourage you. Now, from the Unpacking It studios in Charlotte, North Carolina, uniting sports fans everywhere, here is Bryce Johnson. Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast, where we unpack sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. I'm Bryce Johnson. Hope you're doing well today. We have got a special edition of Unpacking It for you today because on Saturday, June 20th, Unpacking It was a part of a a big conference in Charlotte called Man Up. And so today on the podcast, we're going to share a portion of that morning with you. And it was a, a panel that I did with Two former Panthers, Jonathan Stewart and Mike Tolbert. And, and we talked about teamwork and brotherhood and, and having a fellowship in life. And these two guys were awesome. Uh, they were excellent. And so I think you'll, you'll be really encouraged and inspired by what they share with us today. And if you'd like to watch the entire Man Up conference, uh, you can go to manupcharlotte.org and you can also register to receive all the bonus videos all the breakout videos all of that for 10 bucks and and so i encourage you to check that out uh that'd be awesome also at the end of the the panel interview uh, i'll share a couple thoughts uh, from the conversation Uh, but before we jump in let me ask you this do you need to get your own health insurance well go to health market genius dot com know your options it's health market genius dot com support them as they support us well let's jump right in it's the man up panel with jonathan stewart and mike tolbert right here on the unpacking it podcast intriguing guests and inspiring conversations this is unpacking it with bryce johnson Let me quickly introduce both of these guys. And this next panel, we heard from Derwin uh, about our our faith and, and ultimately, you know, who, our purpose and, and giving our lives to, to Jesus. And because of that, because of the, the heart change that we've experienced, we want to go reach the fatherless. We want to make a difference. And, and the, the third part of this morning is we want to do it together. So we want to be teammates. We want to have brotherhood and fellowship to be able to make a difference together, to live as followers of Jesus together. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what it looks like to be a teammate on the football field, but, but more importantly, off the field. So let's say good morning to, to Jonathan Stewart and Mike Tolbert. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, man. Doing awesome. Well, glad you guys are, are with us. And, and let me let me give a couple quick bios. Uh, we'll start with Mike. He's a husband, father of three. He grew up in Georgia, played college football at Coastal Carolina. He signed with San Diego in 2008 after going undrafted. He played fullback with the Chargers until 2011. And then he signed with our Panthers playing in Carolina until 2016. He then spent his final season with the Buffalo Bills. He was a three-time Pro Bowler, two-time first-team All-Pro fullback. He blocked for this man right here, (laughs) Jonathan Stewart. Jonathan is a husband with one daughter. He grew up in Washington State, played college football at Oregon. He was the Panthers' first-round pick, 13th overall in 2008, and played in Carolina until 2017 before spending one season with the Giants. Do we count that? Do we remember that? You're a Panther. You're a Panther. Forget the Giants. But he retired as a Panther. He signed a one-day uh, contract. And he was a Pro Bowl running back. And he's the all-time rushing leader for the Panthers. 7,318 yards. Throw in 51 rushing touchdowns. And he's also a musician. 
So I don't know if we'll we'll get you playing anything today, but uh, glad to have these two guys. And before we talk to them, just for some fun, for those of you uh, hanging out at home. uh, So I'm a part of Unpacking It Ministries. We're a ministry for sports fans. And so I, I host a podcast, but we also do trivia nights. Sports Trivia Nights. So I got two trivia questions for you. Leave your comments in the uh, Facebook feed, and, and we'll see how, uh, how well you know the Panthers. First question. So he's the all-time leading rusher, but who was the first running back the Carolina Panthers drafted? It's got to be somebody old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, like maybe maybe that. Tim. Bianca Oh, yeah, that's Bacca. Tim Bianca Batuka. Yeah. Absolutely. It is? Tim Biakabatuka, yeah. 1996, eighth overall. That was a group effort. Right. He's, he's, he's a legend. He's still in Charlotte. Wonderful, wonderful man. Uh, no disrespect. God I didn't well. mean to say he was old, but you no, older he's old. than us. He's, you old. He's, he's older. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a great guy. All right. You need to come to Bible study, Tim. <laughs> Question two. All right. Name the Hall of Fame running back who Mike Tolbert blocked for. Ooh. LaDainian Tomlinson. Yes, sir. LaDainian Tomlinson. That's right. So uh, LaDainian went, in, went to the Hall of Fame a few years ago. So hopefully you guys knew those, those answers at, at home. But, but we're going to jump in and, and, and talk to these guys. And, you know, first up, as, as former Panthers still living in the city, uh, I imagine you're still rooting for the Panthers. But it's been a crazy off season and, and kind of last few months. Now we've got a... New coach, new quarterback, we've got new owner. Uh, we'll start with you, Jonathan. What have you thought just kind of about the overall changes going on with the Panthers? A change is going to come. No matter what you want to say about it, it's going to come. Um, you know, you see it with, you know, our careers. I mean, you know, you know it's going to end, but when it does, it's still something that you can't really, you know, it doesn't settle immediately. Um, it takes time, and I think right now, you know, the change was obviously um, on the horizon, and I think people are still getting used to it, and I think this 2020 year, as we're in it right now, it's been chaotic, and it's been, you know, unmeasurable um, compared to other years in the past, so I think things are just not settling the way things used to settle, um, so... Um, you know, a lot of changes. I think, you know, the quarterback situation, um, you know, Teddy's going to come in here and, and, and do a good job. And because, um, I mean, he proved himself, you know, with Minnesota and definitely proved himself when he was with the Saints, um, when Drew Brees was out. So, and I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of intel there. So that's right. That, opponent. That'll be nice. Tap into that. Um. I think you can really sense the change coming a couple of years ago when the new owner came in and he just he started doing things. It was a different feel around the facility. Uh, so I think everybody was on the edge then to like, hey, we got to put up or shut up. We got to we got to perform or we're all going to be out of here, you know, and um, he gave him time. So now things are starting to switch. And he's doing things like he's like, it. you know, you don't get to become a guy of that status without being able to make some power moves. And he made the ultimate power move. So, Yes, he, yes, he has. So I, I can't wait to, for the season to get going, and we'll see what the, the new team looks like. Uh, but for both of you, you know, re- retired from the NFL, and, and you mentioned, hey, even when it comes, it's, it's tough. It's hard to prepare for. Well, we'll start with you, Mike. Uh, how has the post-career gone? How has the transition uh, away from the NFL? And, and you can share kind of about your, your new a profession and then what you're up to now, your new business. Right. Well, um, for me, I, w- I would say the first year after retirement was the toughest. You know, I battled through trying to find myself outside of football. You know, football from the time I was four years old has been the thing that I look to for the next season to come, the next training session, the next boxing session, you know, the next time I get to go to OTAs with this guy, you know, next time we get to go to our Friday night running back dinners, our Saturday night running back dinners. Um, Who picked up those tabs? We uh, we played, um, what's the game? Uh, crossword. crossword. So whoever whoever <laughs> finished the crossword puzzle last had to pick up the check. It usually was either Fozzie or Cameron Artis Payne. Yeah, oh, Cat, <laughs> Cat was usually the last one. Right. He was like, Man, I don't want to do that. Oh, no. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to interrupt. But, but anyways, yeah, um, so now, you know, I, I kind of I found a new passion. I started a, a transportation business. Um, so we we run general freight trucking. It's tough, but at the same time, it, it fills my day with 
excitement of not knowing exactly what's going to happen. So I, I stay on my toes 24-7. I think it's keeping me sharp mentally. Obviously, I got three kids, you know, one who I brought with me today. Um, he's probably the toughest out of my three. So I kind of keep him in line. Um, Just like his daddy. <laughs> my mom says the same thing. He said, that's you when you were six. I love it. Um, but, yeah, so that I means just my journey of being able to create something outside of football, which I found challenging, but I found fun as well. You know, uh, my wife and I are getting ready to open a rock box studio here in Charlotte, too. So I'm, I'm becoming a businessman instead of just a football player. Good, good for you, man. That, that's that's awesome. It. I love, love hearing that. And, and Jonathan, what about for you? Um, well, uh, my first year of retirement has just, I guess, passed. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think, you know, it's been a, a interesting time because me and my wife, you know, we were traveling around towards the end of my career bouncing with the Carolina Panthers back to California where her parents were and her family lived, um, raising Kaya, um, building a house. So we'd never really had a, a season where we could just be settled somewhere. And so last year was that, along with retirement, along with me having free time and, you know, expectations of what retirement looked like as far as downtime and all these things. And, um, you know, last year was, we were busy, more busy than ever. Um, so it was challenging as far as, you know, prioritizing and all those things and scheduling and putting things in the calendar. Um, but, you know, I think now we've, we've gotten a hold of what our life looks like. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all about customizing your life, you know, and, that's what we've been, you know, steady on. And um, as far as my um, our endeavors outside, you know, my wife is doing a great job with Charlotte lately, which we acquired last year, which is a digital marketing company. And, um, you know, just pouring into the community in ways that we can. And, um, you know, I've, I'm, an, I'm an investor in a lot of things, so just carrying on those things as well and learning different opportunities and real estate and yeah, it's a lot of, lot going on. Yeah. Full life following football. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. encouraging to hear. Well, well, let's go back to the football field for a moment because we'll, we'll start with you, Jonathan. It's cool to have both you guys together on, on a panel and, and, and understand that you guys are, are friends, but it began with you running behind him, blocking for you. He, he was your, your fullback. So, so what was that like? And, and, and ultimately how did the, the friendship form you know, from football to, to then go beyond the field? I mean, whenever you got somebody that is protecting you, <laughs> protecting, and when I say protecting you, I mean, this, this is a guy that is literally my brother. Um, from the moment that he came to Carolina and we, we was sharing lockers next to each other, you know, I, I automatically embraced him. Um, because he was, he, he, if anyone knows Toad, you know, he just comes off as someone that is loving and caring and loyal. Mm. And all those things are what you want in a fullback. You know, obviously his size, you know, out the gate, you, ain't wanna, you don't want to come up against him. So, <laughs> um, but his loyalty, you know, on the football field and off is one of the things that, um, inspire me and, and just ha even him as a father, you know, watching him having his babies and, and bringing them into the world and how he's been nurturing and all those things. When I was single, those are, he's a guy that inspired me to want to have a family and want to have kids. And, um, so, I mean, this is my brother and I came, I come to him with everything. I mean, I'll come, come in hurt, banged up. And I'll complain to him. He, like, he's my vetting. You know, we vet to each other. Um, vent, I mean, vent to each other. And, you know, this is what, we, what you do in the locker room. You, you're going through life outside of football. And you have to have a, someone in your corner that you can, you know, bounce things off and ideas and what's going on at home. 
because you can't carry those things on your own. And um, Toll has been a good source for me um, and my growth. That, that, uh, it's encouraging to hear. Yeah. And, and I just think of this, this image and, and parallel to, to life to think a, a fullback is getting out in front to kind of make the path a little bit more clear and, and, and to block for his, his running back. And so, Mike, as you, you think about that and, and having blocked for Jonathan, how, how does that translate to, to life? And, and even how can that encourage guys to almost have that full, fullback running back relationship in, in, in our own relationships and friendships? Well, you know, I, um, I'm, I've, I'm big on, on memories. And I don't know if he remembers it. There were two people, when I signed here, there were two people that texted me the very day. It was Thomas Davis, who I already knew for a long time, and him. First time ever talking to him, meeting him. He was like, hey, congratulations, man. Everybody speaks highly of you. Let's get to work. And that, that was the entire thing. And I appreciated that so much, you know, that it built a camaraderie for us already, you know, before we even met face to face. But to get back to your point, you know, having somebody that is willing to take the pain for you mm. gives you a certain type of level of comfort with your situation. Mm. You know, uh, it's been plenty of times where I've called him and I've been so broken down and, and, and hurt just by the situations that I was going through, you know, whether it's battling depression or a uh, financial situation that I'm having, or just trying to figure something out and just being able to bounce ideas off of him or being able to, tell him frankly like how irritated I am at my wife Mm -hmm. you know what I mean things like that having him being able to absorb my pain and then refurbish it turn it around and put it to a different light to make me see it a different way is something that I think everybody needs man woman child everybody needs somebody that you can go to and and that can take it and put it in a different perspective you know, it's been plenty of times he's called me. Like he said, we bounce so much stuff off each other. We talk. I'll call him and just say, Stu, what's up, bro? How you doing? And we'll be on the phone for an hour. <laughs> just because he didn't know he needed to get something off his chest. Or I didn't know. You know what I mean? So being able to, as a man, go to somebody and have them take, have that type of um, barrier that's down enough for you to absorb that blow, you know, it's, it's really beneficial. Do you want to add anything or we'll jump? I mean, no, I, I think he did a great job explaining that. I mean, it's literally just like the term of him playing fullback. And there's times where, you know, you got to have your, your, your brother's back. And in, in the terms of blocking for him, he's taking the pain, right? And, <laughs> but there's also a pain that if I don't follow his block, you know what I'm saying? That's, good. That's like a, a letdown. So it's almost kind of like, you know, being there for your brother and what he's doing and, and, and what's the word? Um, validation. You know what I'm saying? I think really when we call each other and when we're talking and then next thing you know, we're on the phone for 45 minutes and it's really a moment of us validating each other and where we are in, in our struggle as, as parents, as husbands, um, as friends, and as business owners. You know what I'm saying? So, like, validation and encouragement are huge in, in you know, father, in, in brotherhood and fatherhood. And to know you're not alone and, yeah. and knowing that you're dealing with, with similar stuff. And, and I think for... For men, we, we hear that and go, man, I want that, or, or maybe I'm, I'm lacking in that area. And, and guys are, are listening today going, man, that sounds awesome. And I never had a, a fullback blocking for me on the, the football field. But, but hopefully there's an encouragement today to, to be intentional with our friendships. Like it takes one of you to call the other. Yeah. And versus thinking, ah, he's probably busy or ah, I'm not going to bother him with my struggle today. So how have you guys maybe, you know, overcome some of the, uh, the, the hurdles that, that we face as, as men when we're, we're busy or we don't like to be vulnerable. We don't like to admit that we're weak or, or admit that we're, we're struggling with our wives or with uh, our, our kids or, or something like that. But Mike, if you want to maybe jump in on, on that and 
How have you been able to, to overcome that? I mean, well, I, I think I'm, me personally, I'm a little bit different. I'm an open book. So if you ask me a question, I'm going to give you the real answer, That's cool. whether you like it or not. Um, but I also have to be better, you know, because my um, I've got a lot of friends that I grew up with. You know, I just talked to one the other day and then we're trying to take a men's trip at the end of August. And he was like, man, I ain't talked to you in a while. Just checking on you, seeing how you're doing. And my immediate thought, immediate thought was, man, I need to do that more. I need to just reach out to people and just see how they're doing. I need to be more intentional on, you know, cultivating the relationships that I've already had and not just worry about business, family, you know, um, kids, you know, all that stuff that that's going to take care of itself. You know, obviously they're important, but the friendships outside of that is also important. So just being more intentional. I, I mean, I, I don't know how you do it. There's no blueprint to it, but you got to be able to um, self-analyze and know that you need to do those things in order to keep your stuff together. And, and recognizing the, the friendships that, that do have a lot of value. That, that there is a mutual building up and encouragement and, and, and accountability and, and shared experiences and um, knowing what someone's been through and, and to be able to, to walk alongside them. And, and I, again, I think it goes back to that intentionality. And, and so let, let's go back to the, the locker room for, for a second. And, and when you guys were, were playing, the, I'm always uh, encouraged and amazed how the, you know, the followers of Jesus in a locker room the fellowship that ends up taking place, the, the encouragement that takes place amongst uh, believers in an NFL locker room uh, is, is inspiring. And, and so right. from what you experience and maybe share just a little bit about that, how can that be uh, an example and an encouragement to the men listening as well with this kind of desire for us to experience that locker room life, those locker room relationships, even though we're not playing football? You know, um, in the locker room, the locker room obviously is a unique place. You know, uh, it doesn't matter black, white, or indifferent. Like, you're a football player when you're in the locker room. So there's a certain comfort there, you know, where you can go in and, and you can go talk to the long snapper for 30 minutes about politics. You can talk to, you know, your all-pro tight end about race. You can talk to your head coach about the military. You can talk to anybody about anything. Um so being able to have that type of openness, I think it starts with that, with everybody just opening their ears and closing their mouth. You know, everybody is quick to listen, to respond, instead of quick to hear what you're actually saying and process it. So, um, yeah, open your ears, close your mouth, and just listen. And that way you can have a legit conversation and not have your emotions attached to it. Yeah, I think diversity plays a huge role in that, you know, um, and just being vulnerable and being open. Um, but I also think when you are a part of something that has, that everyone is serving a bigger purpose, mm. you know, a bigger goal in mind, everyone, you know, is e it's easier to be on the same page. And so if I know that, you know, he's, at the end of the day, trying to win a game and also trying to feed his family. And I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm going to do everything I can to better him as a football player and him as my brother. Mm. Um, you know, so I think the, the intention is there, everyone's on the same page. Mm. And I think diversity is good because you experience different cultures, you experience different backgrounds, you experience people's lives from a front row seat. Um, and you learn a lot. I mean, I've learned, you know, you know, how to do my finances in my locker room. I've learned how to block key protection <laughs> in the yeah. locker room. <laughs> but like, I've also learned how, what, it, what not to do. And I've learned what to do as a husband and as a father, you know, you can learn all those things right there in the locker room. If you have your eyes open and your ears um, available um, to the knowledge that is at the hands of many men that have walked and gone through a lot of experiences and background. So, I mean, it, luckily for us, we had that 
regardless. Mm. You know, I, I bet it, it's, it's it's really hard for you know a guy that doesn't have a locker room or a gym or whatever. But you know, I encourage you to to open yourself up um, to, and expose yourself to you know like-minded people. And the first place to do that is you know in the church because at the end of the day, you know that everybody's goal is the same, everybody's purpose is the same. And that is God. So if you can get closer to God um, and be around people that are trying to do the same thing, um, that's one way to be around like, like-minded like men. Amen. Amen. And so for today here at, at Man Up, listening to you, you know, talk about in a locker room, the goal is to, to win a Super Bowl. So you get guys on the same page. You're linking arms for that, that purpose. And, and so you, you put some of your selfishness aside. You say, all right, how, how, how can I make the team better? What can I do to, to improve, you know, my, my teammates? So with that mentality, it, it translates to two things for us today. Uh, one you mentioned as far as our, our faith goes and, and growing in our faith. We need teammates. We need brotherhood. We need fellowship to, to, to say, okay, our goal is to become more and more like Jesus, to honor him with our lives, to, to be the, the husband and the father that he's called us to be. But we can't do it alone. We, we have to, to link arms and we have to have that, that purpose and that goal uh, as the, the, the target. And to say, all right, how can I help my, my buddy get there? And, and pick him up on the, the, the plays that are, that are tough. And he's been knocked down. And all right, man, next play, well, let's keep going. And, and then secondly, which we talked about uh, during our last panel, the, the fatherlessness issue. And, and so this idea that we can have unified action around that issue. To say, let's link arms. Let's do this together. We, we don't have to do it alone. Let's encourage one another to say, hey, in what ways are you manning up? In what ways are you a mentor? In what ways are you making a difference in the community? We've got to have guys in our, you know, quote unquote, locker room uh, holding us accountable to that, encouraging us uh, with that. So I appreciate uh, you guys sharing about that because it's just encouraging uh, for us today, especially coming out of you know, the, the last few months where we've been so isolated and, and it, it requires us because we're not necessarily bumping into as many people as we used to. It requires that intentionality to get on the phone, to check in, to call, and, and then ultimately set up, uh, you know, these, these types of relationships, hopefully when we get out of all this craziness and, and be able to, 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 to have this kind of brotherhood. So I appreciate what you guys uh, represent with that. And, and I, I do want to get your thoughts, though, on, you know, the, this topic that we, we discussed with Colin and Josh and, and about fatherlessness, and, and if you would be willing to share, you know, just your kind of your perspective on it, and, and even your background, and and something that can be an encouragement to to the men listening today. And Mike, if you want to jump in first. Well, I've always um, lived my life as I'm, I'm mimicking others. You know, even though I had kids before him, I still like to look at him the way he raises his daughter and see if I can apply something to the way I raise my children. You know, I was born, you know, prematurely. I was born, you know, with a hole in my heart. So I'm not, I wasn't supposed to be here. You know, I wasn't supposed to be playing football. You know, um, no father in the home at all. I've met my father like twice. You know what I mean? So my mom worked three and four jobs just to make ends meet for me and my sister. Um, so she couldn't teach me how to be a man. So I had to look outside of the, the house to see what it was. And then a lot of times I saw what was wrong, but a lot of times I saw what was right by mimicking what my uncle did. My uncle, uh, Therian, he's a great father, great husband. So I just, I took, I look at him as like a blueprint of what a man should be. Someone that protects his family, protects his home, loves his wife, shows his children how to treat his sons, how to treat him a woman. And, um... Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to to sit here and think that I had no one to give me that blueprint. But then I think about it, I had 20,000 different fathers because I take a bit some pieces from everyone. Mm. Um, I, I really appreciate being a father now because, um, like, I brought my son with me today just so he can hear these words from me and his uncle discussing is what he called him. Um, so he can hear these words, you know, he can hear men being positive and trying to reach other men to step out on the limb and 
and help like Josh does, you know, with the with the abandoned project. Like he goes out and he reaches these kids, you know, that may not have a father in the home. He goes out and he, you know, just take them to have a good time. I mean, it could be something as little as just asking them how their day is going. You know, uh, telling the kid that I love you that doesn't hear from another man. Mm-hmm. You know, being okay to cry as a man is something that's fine. You know what I mean? Uh, but so many times as men, we're taught that men have to be strong and they can't share their emotions. You know, you're not supposed to cry if you're not a man. Um, but it's it's gratifying, you know what I mean? Because I'm in a position now that I can change somebody's life. So my first and foremost, my responsibility is to make sure my, my son grows up to respect everybody and learns to love people the way that Jesus does. But then my next responsibility is each one teach one. So I'm going to teach somebody else's kid or somebody else how the way that I'm doing it. And then my son, when he gets of age, should be able to do the same thing. So we continue that cycle of becoming better men. I love it. Amen. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> good. No, but yeah, um, we're very similar, which is another reason why we connect so connected so well when we're playing together and, and why we're brothers to this day. Um, you know, again, you know, my mom was single mom raising two boys and, you know, my parents got divorced when I was in, uh, third grade. So, and that's a typical situation, you know, where pops just kind of does his own thing or trying to find his way. And, you know, looking as a father now and married, you know, the, you know, their, their situations looking back, you know, they they had to be difficult, you know, they did their best. They tried their best. Um, but now, you know, looking back at how I've been able to develop to where, you know, I've managed to, to have good grades in school, to, to play football, um, well, and to stay encouraged, um, in my faith and my walk with God. Um, it's a testament to exactly what, um, Tobra was saying about mimicking other men. Um, you know, I had coaches, you know, I had my youth pastor, Cecil Daniels to this day. He's like my brother, my father, you know, my, my, and my pastor, you know, he, he's a large part of my council. And I think it's important for everybody to have a council, you know, like someone, like a group of people that's in your ca- your corner, that's going to tell you the truth and hold you accountable to it and check up on you. Um, you know, it's, it's important because you can't do this by yourself. You can't do it alone. You'll fall. Even if you think that you're, you're doing something, you know, you'll end up finding yourself, you know, in a hole eventually. So, um, yeah, man. And, and, and I think what that's done for me is it's opened my heart and my passion to the youth. And, and understanding the importance of what mentoring is and what the, what the importance for a man to show up in any kid's life in a positive way. Mm. Um, mentorship is key. You know, you can, you can teach the Bible all day long, but if you ain't walking the walk and showing a person how to walk in love and how to walk in care and, and how to, you know, develop the interest of taking care of your family, um, you know, you're leaving a person wounded. So, um, yeah, man, I think God works in mysterious ways. And, and I think at the end of the day, you, you not being raised with your earthly father and somehow you're, con- you're, you've been introduced to, um, you know, your God, you've been introduced to your heavenly father. Uh, that's the, that's the best way to really connect with your, your heavenly father. Um, because you know, the absence, mm. but then you find home, you know, you find where you, the true father is mm. and you learn obviously through the Bible of what, you know, the father in heaven is to be like, and you know, that it's, it's sacrifice. It's, it's intentionality. It's direction. You know, I think a lot of times we go about life and trying to have the right intentions, but we're not pure. The only person that is pure is Jesus. Um, he's the only one that can have the right intentions. 
Um, but what he did do is give us direction. And um, so I think, you know, a testament, to, a testament to both of us of, you know, being fathers now and, and you know, the gratitude of, you know, the, the blessing of being a father um, is just following direction and, and being mindful of the good fathers that are already around us and that has already presented themselves and just continue to learn and grow because... <laughs> I'm still learning with my three-year-old how to be a father. That's <laughs> so, right. And I think, I, I think it's never-ending. So, <laughs> we're, we're, Yeah, we're on a, a journey, and we continue to, to learn and, and grow, and that's why today is so important just to, to be encouraged and inspired. Not that anybody up here has all the answers. That's, that's not the, the message today, but it's, hey, how can we together continue to grow and point each other to our heavenly father because that's that's the answer and so the the void that we all feel ultimately is is only uh filled with with jesus and and so um man that's the the message today and and so thankful for you guys taking time to to be a part of man up and sharing your heart with us today and 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 living out this this example in your your own families and homes, but, but also in the community. And as a Panthers fan, it's awesome to keep you guys here in Charlotte and, and to have you, you still a part of things. Um, even though we lost you to Buffalo temporarily, Giants temporarily, you came back. So that's, uh, so that's great. Well, we are, are running out of time here and man, we could hang out and talk to these guys all, all day. Uh, but we've got more content uh, to come. And, and also be sure to, to follow us on, on Twitter, or Instagram, Facebook, everywhere, at ManUpQC. Um, and, and also you can follow these guys on, on social media as well. And we are moments away from sending you to the breakouts. So if you haven't registered yet, from 11 to 12, we've got breakouts. And so I encourage you to, to go to manupcharlotte.org, register. You'll get sent the links to some incredible speakers and topics that matter to you as men. Uh, and so, so be sure to do that. And, and as we wrap up too, we, we discussed teammates, teamwork, having a, having a fullback in our, in our lives, uh, being intentional in relationships. And, and so I, I just want to invite you to, to, to take those next steps to say, all right, I need some men in my life. Who are the men in my life? Who, who am I going to man up with? And who's going to hold me accountable to man up? And, and we talked about earlier, who are we going to impact, which, which we want to do that and, and pray that prayer. But, but we need guys to, to link arms with so that we have this unified action. I've been saying it all morning, unified action. We got to do it together. And, and so we want to follow Jesus and we want to pursue his, his will for our, our lives. We need the encouragement from, from other brothers and, and friends and mentors uh, to be able to, to, to push ahead. So here's, here's a way for us to know uh, if you're interested in getting connected more to Man Up, but also uh, we, we've got ministries that have helped put this event on today. And the ministry that I lead is called Unpacking It. We're a ministry for sports fans. And so we have a, a small group model uh, that we call PAX. So if you're interested in, in getting together with other sports fans to talk sports, faith, and life, uh, we'd love to connect you to a pack. And then also coming up, the NFL season, We've, fantasy football is huge. And so I wrote a book called Fantasy Football Fellowship. It's designed for fantasy football leagues to get together, whether on, online or in person, to talk fantasy, to play fantasy together, but then also talk about faith and how, it, how fantasy actually parallels uh, faith, fantasy parallels faith. So check that out, fantasyfootballfellowship.com. Uh, Intriguing guests and inspiring conversations. This is Unpacking It with Bryce Johnson. And I'm back here in the Unpacking It studio, and what an awesome conversation it was with Mike and Jonathan, and so cool to, to have them a part of Man Up. And, and a lot of great nuggets to, to take away from what they shared with the men in Charlotte and then with you today on the podcast. But how great was the illustration that they, they discussed in regards to who's your fullback, who's blocking for you, and, and to, to, to listen to each of them share their perspective on that 
And it was just kind of cool because as I was putting together questions for the panel, that that illustration kind of stuck out to me. Or the question that first popped into my head was, huh, I wonder what it was like to block for Jonathan Stewart. Oh, I wonder what it was like to run behind Mike Tolbert. And then God really kind of gave me that idea. Oh, wow, that kind of is a good you know, comparison to friendship and what that looks like. And then those two guys, they took it to a whole nother level. And, and, and all the different kind of angles that, that you can look at that, that illustration in regards to, okay, who's maybe paving the way for me? Who's blocking out some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the bad stuff coming ahead of me, the defense, getting rid of the defenders uh, that are trying to come and get me? Who's, who's got my, my, my back, so to speak? And, and then if you're the runner, will you follow the blocks? Will you follow the, the person you know, that, that's blocking for you? And I think that parallels, you know, spiritually speaking, too, as we follow Jesus. So it's having people in our lives that, that are you know, paving the way, make, make, making you know, holes or opening up doors for us, and, and then are we willing to, to follow it? And I think Mike was talking about how uh, you know, if, if the running back doesn't follow his blocker, follow the fullback, a lot of times there's pain. There is pain that, that will then uh, come your way because normally the fullback is taking on that pain for you. And so there, there's something special about friendship when we're willing to carry that pain or um, uh, take that pain on and, and absorb it, absorb the pain, which is what a fullback does. And so I think that's a great character trait of a loyal, strong friend. Yeah, man, I'm going to absorb some of that pain with you. I'm going to be right there with you and and to help you avoid certain pain, but then also I'll take it on for you. So I just love that, and I hope that you enjoyed hearing a little bit about that. And it's just cool how God uses sports in that way to to make concepts come to life for us. And and so I experience it regularly because I write the Unpack This devotional that takes a a sports story, relates it to the Bible, and, and we send that out each weekday. And so... Uh, it's amazing as I'm watching sports, listening to sports talk or reading articles, God brings <laughs> quotes or something that it, it happens during a game. It br- he brings it to my mind, and then he'll also bring a biblical application, a biblical principle to that or, or something that relates to life that, that we can learn and grow. And so if you haven't subscribed to the devotional yet, check that out on unpackingit.com, and we uh, we take kind of similar parallels like like that fullback parallel. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to, to do that uh, during the panel and for you today on the podcast. So thanks so much for listening, and, and we encourage you to stay connected with Unpacking It, unpackingit.com. And then again, if you want more Man Up content, go to manupcharlotte.org. But as we wrap up the podcast each time, I always remind you, that I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. He was resurrected, and through faith, I have been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well, and I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together. That was the message today, together. So I hope you'll join me, and hopefully you'll join me next time right here on the Unpacking It podcast. For more information about the show, our events, and other resources, visit unpackingit.com. That's U-N-P-A-C-K-I-N-I-T dot com. We hope you are encouraged, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. To support our show and Unpacking It Ministries with a financial gift, visit unpackingit.com slash donate. We look forward to unpacking sports, faith, and life with you again next week.